just getting technical. Welcome back to the web channel of Two Bald Idiots Plus Scott. Today we have an exciting new project for us and the whole of the universe. This is an 80s, 90s M5. It was an 80s, 90s M5. A customer has contacted us, um, because George is so good looking, about how we can put the mystery engine. He's infused about this whole project, as you can see. So yeah, we're putting this in this. This has seen better days. I mean, it's definitely ratty. I don't know whether I like <laughs> it or not. Baby Jesus. Show me some of the rattiness. As you can see, it's very incomplete. Doesn't have any interior. Doesn't have an engine. Doesn't even have a fuel tank. So we'll see how far we get with that. Tank. No, it's not got a drive shaft, diff, none diff, of it. None of that. So he doesn't even have the LSD that you would buy an M5 chassis for. Basically, just a rolling shell. Rolling shell. But that, that can all be found. But um, yeah, it needs a lot of bodywork, rust repair, it needs panels, it needs interior. That's not actually our uh, jurisdiction, but ours is to get it running, get it driving, and then figure all that stuff out afterwards. So I guess uh, you're probably wondering what engine we've got. So, <laughs> oi, Alfred. We think this might be a world's first because it has not been seen anywhere on the internet, so that means it's a world's first. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. Duh. Duh. Um, this is an engine. It's from an M4, is it? Yep, from an M4. For any BMW Kinos, you may recognize it. It is an S55. That is a twin turbo 3 litre inline six. Come on! I think it makes about 400 plus brake. How many? Uh, numbs, 500 numbs. numbs. 500, 500 numbs. numbs. That's many. I was gonna rip the <laughs> out of this car, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> he's brought us the engine, he's brought us the harness for the engine, and a chassis. A lot of parts missing, a lot of things that don't fit. Our plan today is to take the engine and offer it up to the chassis. We've already offered it up as such, and the sump and the subframe are incompatible. Big bang! Bang. And uh, that's the first port call, really, getting the engine in the hole. So, first step, we need to get the E30 out of the shop because we pretty much completed this now. We just need to finish the cooling, waiting on some parts, so. It's very loud, mate. Yeah, it's got no exhaust. But what it does have is the mighty, mighty, mighty M54. Not a B30, but we've got an absolute hey. spicy spaghetti mess. Like the geezer needs to tell us to do something. Yep. He, uh, he chopped a bunch of stuff apart that didn't need to be chopped apart. Got it running, basically. So, engine swapped for this, matey. If you want it done yourself, let us know and we will bang it out in a jiffy. <laughs> Oh, you just... World's strongest man in the oh. building. <laughs> Is that bright? don't actually know the condition of it. So that's the first port call, is to see how much rust there is, I suppose. Eh? First impressions, it's better than we thought, although there is a lot of rust. Here, here. It has got poly bushes. It is missing a lot of things, but 
It's not terrible, but it's not amazing. We offered the engine up from the top before. We're gonna do that again with it a little bit off the ground so we can see the underside, see where the interference is at, and then go from there. This is the worst of it, I think, isn't it? Whoa, I didn't even see that corner. Oh, here. It's raining rust. Fucking yeah. Sorry, let me refilm that, mate. One thing we got to do before we offer up the engine from the top is remove the steering box because that was giving us interference last time. Thank you, sir. A multitude of issues that we have already before we've even started. The sump doesn't fit in the subframe, so we need to chop that to make that fit. Steering box is in the way of the engine, so we've got to convert that to a rack. No engine mounts available, so we're going to have to make up custom mounts. Cooling system is obviously all going to be custom. Fueling is always going to be custom. Don't know if the E34 pump will allow what we're going to try and get here. The electrical side really is the biggest headache. There's a few ways of doing it. Some other people in E30s in the 2002, they may have taken a cluster and all the ECU and essentially set the E34 as an M4. Or you go standalone, so you have a completely custom ECU, custom clocks, which look like gash, and it can run on a, on a pallet basically by itself without even needing the car. The timeline, you reckon? The timeline for this project, infinity. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to have it done as soon as possible, really. We're going to be tripping over this thing for months already, I can tell. But you get oh. cracking, mate, and time is of the essence. Quite I wish it was like a ray gun or something, man. Quite heavy things, man. It's like a video camera. Yeah. <laughs> that, as you can see, frees up quite a lot of room. This was before, this is without. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah, this jobby, which goes on to that jobby, is still in the way, somewhat. We've got to do a uh, steering rack conversion to get it in there. I think it's 46 rack. Double tag the world. Double tag everything. Also, these engine mounts look very familiar. They're set for uh, the, the 36. Hockey, not the hockey pucks. <laughs> It's quite a nice little seat in here. Get up, you lazy. Bye. Sorry. It's coming down very slowly. Um, Is that the potential answer? It's quite mind boggling really, isn't it? What was the comment that you read on that forum? What did it say? If you do not have access to software, please do not do this. It could be dangerous. There's a lot of things there for it to hit. It's getting technical. There's one eight. As predicted, it doesn't fit. But the problem that we actually have is that the crane doesn't allow us to go far enough back into the engine bay. Yeah, so I'm hitting on the chassis that's welded on. So we are going to wedge it with some pieces of wood and then do some more measuring and hopefully come to some sort of solution. All hands on deck. Pull it to the cavalry. I'm not sure what we've got. Is the head hitting yet? Yeah, it's coming down. We'll see on the Well, it's side. touching. The gearbox is touching at the top of the tunnel. <laughs> now that the engine is right at the back of the engine bay, that's really where we want the engine to be. We've got to go underneath it, measure which subframe pieces are going to have to be put where. Mm -hmm. And I had previously thought about this, and to avoid ruining all the geometry, if you weld your new pieces on before you chop the other stuff out of the way, it should stay in the same place. Let's see how you get on, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of same place. If <laughs> only it was that easy. We have made some startling conclusions, haven't we, George? Um, yeah, it took a little while, but after some brain scratching, we have worked out. We're gonna use hopefully a five two a five two five IX subframe, which is basically a four wheel drive version of this car. We've got a steering rack at the front. So if you took the box out earlier. Um, we don't want to mess with any of that. The sump right now hits exactly where all that stuff is. So if we move the rack to the front, 
new hubs, new arms, new suspension, steering rack connection from an IX, and then we'll still have to chop subframe. Yeah, I mean, it should give us a bit more room for the rear hump sub. It's almost hump day. <laughs> That's it. That's I don't know what to say, mate. Might see us again, might not. We're going to go, go buy some parts. You will see us again. <laughs> Whether it works out is a different story. Maybe see you later. Nah, we'll Bye. work out. That's all, folks. Yo. Yo. Yo.